Hi, I'm Julie, Bay Fan Balzer, your host, and today we're tooling around, exploring different tools and trying out techniques to see just what happens. And that's my first project, all about layering and experimenting. So this is what we're making ish and I say ish because it's really all about creative play. So some of my favorite tools are art supplies. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually using a file folder as a work surface to keep everything nice and neat and I have a piece of watercolor paper and just some blue painters tape. I want a tape that is going to remove easily from my paper. So I'm going to go ahead and tape it down on all four sides just so it stays nice and neat and this is what it'll look like when I'm done. Then the next thing is I want want to start with a stencil. Now you can use any stencil, but I find that these stencils which um, are silhouettes rather than like a square stencil with holes or a mask rather works really, really well. The next thing is we're going to want to get a little dimensional and textural. So I am going to use something that's a little like a modeling paste but colored. But the one thing I want to point out is I use color charts quite often because this looks like a baby blue here, but if you see how it dries, it actually dries to a much darker finish. So I think color charts are always a good step to go ahead and do. So this is precision. See if you can do this with me. We're just going to go ahead. <laughs> and throw it on there. And I love things like this where you don't have to be too precise. Now the second color that I've chosen is something that coordinates a little bit and you can throw it directly onto the stencil, you can squirt it, and because we've protected everything with the um, file folder, I don't have to worry too much. And then I'm just gonna use a hotel room key. I am gonna hang on to the stencil. You could also tape it down if you wanted but I'm just trying to get some nice smooth on there. And you can see how those two colors are mixing. So it looks like I could use a little more pink. The blue is kind of dominating. So I'm gonna throw that in there. And you can see, so it dries, it kind of looks like mousse or something like that when you put it out, and then it dries to a really chalky pastel-like finish. So I'm just going along here. Now I want to add even more texture. So I'm going to do that with a skewer. And I can just draw some lines because, again, this is a dimensional paste. So it really has a lot of height and you can get a lot in there. You can even just scribble it back and forth. I'm also going to use one of my favorite tools, bubble wrap. And I'm just going to push that down. And you can see it leaves a little impression. I think you'll never know that that was bubble wrap. It just looks almost distressed. And I want to make sure to remove the stencil. It's an easy step to forget because it kind of gets lost in all that yumminess. But look how good the stenciling looks when you pull it off. It's really fantastic. So this needs to dry. And I usually let it dry for like at least an hour or so. Now, once it is dry, you can hear it's totally dry. The next step is I'm going to use some water soluble crayons. So all I'm going to do is just scribble with them. Not very hard at all. You can use colors that blend if you want. This is again, this is where your personal taste in art and art tools matter. Some people like to use things that are very monochromatic and go together, all these blues. And some people say, no, no, I want a contrast. Give me something really contrasty. And again, you can see I'm not drawing, I'm not doing anything really technical, but remember I said these are water soluble. So, finger, water, here we go. You could also use a paintbrush and you can see you can make an orange by mixing this yellow and this red. And if you don't wanna get messy and fingers aren't your things, baby wipes are fantastic because those allow you to get in there and stay clean at the same time, which is really super cool. And you can see how you can blend all these colors. I can probably get a purple if I mix that red and the blue like that, pretty neat, right? And you can see that once you've covered the whole thing, it's gonna look a little something like this. And remember that even though this has been dry for a long time, I can come back in and re-wet it and move it around still. Isn't that so cool? Because these remain movable. Then I'm ready to get spray. So there's a little ball in here. This is like using a spray paint can. You have to hear the ball jiggle around. It's mixing everything because these are acrylic sprays. And these are permanent once they dry. And I'm just going to spray it on here to add some color. 
And you can see how it blends and does a great job. Yellow is a great color for really blending things out and making it down. So even if that looked crazy to you before, it's kind of calmer. And then again, I can take a baby wipe and I can gently remove or move, mix things around. I can even, this is one of my favorite things, I love to use the silver and really shake, 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 shake it. And then it just adds some real shimmer to everything. Look how cool that is. So again, we're layering. I'm gonna let this dry and I am going to have another layer. So now I can bring this stencil back that we already used. And now this is going to be one of these things where I'm gonna pull out the stencil design that we've already seen so that it harkens back to what we've seen before. And you have some nice rhythm because now we have the stencil here, we have the stencil here. I can even flip this stencil over and push on it to make sort of a print. Ha ha, and you can see how cool that is and you can keep playing. And the best part is it's so forgiving. If you don't like it, baby wipe, rub it away and you get another try at it. This is not supposed to be stressful. So just have fun playing around, layering it up. Here you go. Boom, you can see that. Let's do a little print on the edge. And then once all of that dries, you can see what you have. So all that's left is to carefully peel back some of this tape and you can carefully peel it off and you'll have a nice white edge all the way around, which is really what makes it look like finished art. So if we look back at the finished sample, that is ready for a frame, it's ready to go up on a wood canvas, it is ready to decorate your home.